British artist Thomas Hausago is highly sought after these days. His first major exhibition in Europe is also an exclusive display of his works. The venue is one of the most renowned contemporary art institutions, London's Hauser and Wirt Gallery. In the not too distant past, Hausago was penniless and ridiculed, but now his sculptures are commanding a wide audience. This piece is really, truly uh, the synthesis of an action, of a series of actions, which you can see, and then two or three different kinds of working that's a lot more like drawing than sculpting technically. So, for example, uh, these panels that you can see um, in, the, in their original plaster form, they're made flat on the floor. I make a drawing on the floor. We pour the plaster on top of the drawing, so it's like a poured event. We strengthen the back side of it, and then we pop it off the floor, you know? So they're like drawings that become sculpt objects very, very quickly, like within a half day. Plaster cast figures with gaping tears. Thomas often works the material with his hands and feet, leaving impressions. The figures are usually out of proportion and are missing body parts. He breaks with convention, and decorative art has no place in his work. The unfinished, grimacing faces have an unsettling effect. But Hausago knows what he wants. I'm more comfortable with just saying, hey, that's a nice moment, let's say, or, you know, um, that says enough, or something like that, you know, and that the, the activity or the idea of finishing becomes less important. There's kind of a flow across all the works. Thomas Hausago was born in Leeds in northern England. He comes from a working-class family. In the 1990s, he landed a scholarship at Central St. Martin's Art School in London. Inspired by artists like Pablo Picasso, Hausago often uses the simplest of materials. Among his heroes was the bronze sculptor Henry Moore. Erecting monumental works amid vast landscaped gardens was also something Hausago aspired to. But without a patron or education, inspiration could only take him so far. Broke and disillusioned, he destroyed his unwanted sculptures in 2003 and left for L.A. When I went to the States, it wasn't romantic. I, I was really, truly desperate. Me, me and my wife were like, were really at the end of the end of the end. And it was like, okay, I knew a friend in L.A., Matthew Monaghan, the artist, and he said, come and sleep on my floor for a bit. Take him, get out of Europe. There, he met French billionaire businessman and patron of the arts, Francois Pinault. In 2011, he asked Hausago to create a sculpture for a private collection at the Palazzo Grassi Art Museum that he owns in Venice. Money was no object, the artist was told. Hausago created a piece that was to become the unofficial icon of the city's art biennale. It proved to be a turning point. Pinault also owns Christie's Auction House. So far this year, it has sold three of Hausago's works. Figure two went for around 190,000 euros. Figure one sold for some 100,000 euros. And the sculpture he named Portrait fetched a further 150,000 euros. In just four years, Hausago had become a star of the contemporary art world. Over the years, he's proved that he can work to a very high standard. He works hard, consistently, and is very self-critical. But he also has this personal strength, drive and energy. He can't do it any other way. Thomas Hausago is in demand. He has fame and money, but still wants to concentrate on his art. He's learned to appreciate the benefits of his success. As my dad always said, if you've got the choice between being poor and being rich, go, always go with being rich. <laughs> it's just better. It's nice to have, it just uh, takes the pressure off. Rough and unpolished, a style that has certainly paid off for this artist.